Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Christ Jesus. Amen. Our focus this week, again, is on Matthew chapter 10, that gospel reading, as we continue to listen to Jesus talk to his disciples and preparing them to send them out for their first missionary journey, their first job as his ambassadors to other people. And we hear especially these words in verse 39. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Well, friends, the Christian life is one of both conflict and comfort. Our Christian life is one of both strife and of refreshment. And in our gospel reading today, Jesus gives us some images perhaps to help remind us of that and to remind those disciples of that as he sends them out on that missionary journey. So the first image that he gives us is at the very beginning of the reading. He gives us the image of a sword, and that sort of carries the tone for the first section of the reading, verses 34 to 39. But then in the second half, verses 40 to 42, he concludes that with a quite different image, that of a cup of cold water. And so these two images we're going to think about today in helping us consider our Christian life. A sword and a cup of cold water. We'll start first with the sword. So as we think about a sword, we often associate that with conflict and strife, with, with fighting and battle, or at the very least, with defense. So that describes well part of our Christian life. We have conflict and strife with things both seen and things unseen. In the first part of our reading today, Jesus describes some of the conflict and strife that his disciples will encounter as they go out to represent him. The first place that he describes of that conflict is within their own families and within families in general. I know many of you have experienced this conflict in your walk following Christ. You have some family members who reject Jesus and Scripture outright and just don't want to talk about it. Other family members who perhaps are antagonistic or criticize you for your Christian faith, maybe even condemn you for it. And then there are other family members who, even though they grew up in the church, they're apathetic now, or they have gone astray from the faith. And whatever these circumstances may be, they all have a way of creating conflict. They tend to weigh very heavily on our hearts. So one for source of, of conflict and strife in the Christian life is within the family. Jesus goes on then to describe another place and another way that strife may fall upon us. In verse 38, he says, Whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. In following Jesus Christ, we bear our cross. We face struggle. And we face sacrifices to make in following him. One place where we bear that cross is with our own sinful flesh and our own sinful nature. You face struggles and make sacrifices regarding your time and how you use your talents and your treasures. You face struggles and make sacrifices even when it comes to your personal freedoms. Because there are things that even though you can do them, you know that you shouldn't do them in Christ. We also bear that cross when it comes to the world around us. We look at the world around us and we mourn the evil that we see. Sometimes we feel that deeply in our hearts. We mourn the brokenness of the world around us. And wouldn't life just be so much easier if, if we didn't care about it? If we could just look around and none of those things bothered us, but they do. And we do care. Because we know this isn't how things were created to be, and it's not how they're going to be forever. And then another area where we bear that cross in following Christ is as we face Satan. As we face his fiery darts and arrows and, and his attacks of temptation that try to draw us away from Jesus. 
And so the Christian life, without a doubt, is a life of the sword. It is a life that includes conflict and strife. And yet, in that conflict and strife, that life of the sword, you are not alone. You don't face that conflict and strife alone. And, and Jesus makes that clear in perhaps a subtle way in that same verse I pointed out earlier about bearing the cross. In verse 38, he says, Whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Make no mistake, you do bear a cross in following Christ. You face struggles and conflict and strife. And yet you do not do so paving your own way and leading the way. No, instead you bear that cross as you follow Jesus Christ. As you follow the cross bearer. Jesus who bore that cross for you and who is with you as you face that struggle and conflict and strife in following him. Jesus Christ who is there as your helper. And in fact, as you follow Jesus, the cross bearer, you reap the benefits of his bearing that cross for you. Think about those wonderful words that uh, we confess in the small catechism regarding the second article. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. Christ has borne the cross and the grave for you so he can claim you as his own, so that he can invite you to follow him and be with you in that strife and conflict. He also provides you with a helper, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Think about what we confess in the third article of the Creed. I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gift, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. Jesus has, has gifted you with this Holy Spirit in your baptism to dwell in you, to be with you, to help you and guide you, especially as you follow him and face that conflict and that strife. The Christian life is a life of the sword as we struggle, as we face conflict and strife with things seen and unseen, and yet in Jesus Christ, in that struggle, we find our life, even when it appears to be lost. Of course, the Christian life doesn't just include that conflict and strife. It also includes comfort and hope and, and refreshment as we receive God's word and, and receive his promises to us through his son, Jesus Christ, promises of forgiveness and life and salvation. And so in our text, Jesus moves from that image of the sword and being honest about it to a very unassuming image at the end of our reading that of a cup of cold water. But think about how much meaning that cup of cold water has. It, it gives to us this idea, this sense of a basic need being met, thirst being quenched, drink being provided to sustain life and refreshment given where it's needed. So that too, is our life in Christ. Those basic life-sustaining needs are provided for us in Jesus. And we are refreshed in a way that we can't find elsewhere in this sinful world. That happens as we are connected to Christ first in baptism. And he makes allusion to that here in verse 40, that second part of our reading. He says, whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me. You're not out there alone. Jesus is so intimately connected to you that he also connects you to the Heavenly Father. And those receiving or rejecting you because of your being a Christian, well, they're treating Christ Jesus the same way. Jesus, in that second section of our reading, also talks about rewards 
connected with the Christian faith and following him. Some of those rewards are off in the distant future for us, but they far outweigh any of the earthly strife and, and struggles and challenges that we face now. The Apostle Paul would talk about this with some encouraging words. First, as he wrote to the Romans in chapter 8, he said, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. He then writes to the Corinthians in his second letter, chapter 4, Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away. Yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We do face that conflict now, that strife with things seen and unseen, and those words of Scripture are not at all to downplay the reality of that. But they are a reminder for us not to dwell on that, but instead to fix our eyes on Jesus and find our comfort and hope in his promises of things not only now, but things to come. Jesus does also suggest that there are rewards now connected with the Christian faith following Jesus. We don't have to wait for everything. In fact, think of all the, the wonderful joys and blessings you have in your life, specifically because you're following Jesus Christ. Think of, of all the, the wonderful experiences you have in your life simply because you're following Jesus. Think of, of all the wonderful gifts that he brings into your life regularly, his word. And then that word also connected with water and baptism and with bread and wine and the Lord's Supper so that he can deliver his gifts of forgiveness and life and salvation to you. And consider what a great reward it is also, what a great encouragement it is as a Christian when someone else, a family member, friend, co-worker, acquaintance, whoever it may be, when someone else sees your following Jesus, when that person hears how, how you speak as you live your life in Christ under the cross, when that person experiences with you perhaps even strife and, and conflict and sees how you deal with that in Christ, and then they want to share in those gifts because of how you shared Christ with them. They want to share with you, and, and so they perhaps even gift you with, with such a, a small and, and seemingly insignificant thing as a cup of cold water to help you in your walk with Christ in your Christian life. In Christ, we find life even when it seems to be lost. So two images today that help us to, to think about what the Christian life is. A sword and a cup of cold water. Our life in Christ on this earth is one of both conflict and comfort. Our Christian life in, in Christ on this earth is one of both strife and refreshment. And that will be the case until that glorious, wonderful day. When our Lord Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd, the crucified and risen one, the cross bearer, returns. And on that day, that final day of his glory, he will take all of our conflict and leave us only with comfort in his green pastures and still waters. On that final day, he will take all of our strife and leave us instead with eternal refreshment as we dwell in his house forever. When Jesus returns, he will beat every sword into a plowshare that never needs to be touched again. He will take that small, seemingly insignificant cup of cold water and replace it with the overflowing waters of that river of life that come from the throne of God in paradise for eternity. 
What other way is there to respond to that, to that good news, than with amen? Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And now may that peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.